So welcome to part three of the video series. Just wanted to show you a little bit of the progress I've been making. Um, incremental, but progress all the same. Um, I was showing you before how you could make the windows with the pen drill. Uh, how you make the three holes and then you kind of you have to go back and forth a little bit. Well, I got something else called a um, Excel pen vise with six files. And it has, the files are stored in the handle, and it's got six of them. And this one is a flat, square-edged, but tapered file, which is perfect for filing windows. So you don't have to jam it all the way in there, but if you want quick, it should be nice and clean. So a nice clean window. Oh, and here's the what the package looks like. And I'll put a link to where I got mine in the description. So I have started marking out the windows on the uh, bottom of the saucer section. I'm just using a pencil. And uh, my thought is that after I drill out all the windows that I've marked, I might just mark the rest of them with a pencil. Because I don't think it looks that bad and, you know, it's obviously easily removable. Now, I haven't given this ship a bath yet. I'm probably going to take all the stickers off, at least these, because I've got two different sets of new Playmate stickers that I can put on there and correct some of the positioning issues, depending on how picky you are. But, um, but yeah, so this is what I've got so far for the windows. I actually used uh, pictures for reference. Um, in particular, I actually used my, my favorite wallpaper image that I've had on my computer for like 15 years or something. Uh, as the, uh, what I was going for with the underside. Of course, I had to work around the screw holes, so... I tried to make sure not to put any too close to the poles or where the window is going to be on the other side of the post from where the light is. Because then what's the point of having a window hole if you're not going to get any light through it? So that was my thought on that. Um, the other thing I meant to mention before that I haven't seen in any other um, uh, videos or posts about these is that this impulse engine here there's nothing behind it it's just a wall of plastic so if you want to light that you actually have to this little red thing slides out and then it's just a you know like I said a gray wall of plastic back there that you have to drill through in order to light that up so what I did was I drilled sort of a grid of holes with my little wow stick thing here and then so I drilled a grid of holes from this side being careful not to nick the little track where the impulse engine the cover goes in um, so I drilled a grid of holes and then to make it easier to cut out I used this little rounded Dremel head on the inside here so that way there's no chance of me nicking the frame part here where the impulse engine is. So I did it from the inside and just kind of made it like a little bowl sort of shape um, and thinned out the plastic a lot. And then after that, I could go at it from the other side carefully with an X-Acto knife. And I have that uh, square hole you see there.
Oh, yes. Um, so since these vents aren't meant to have light shining through them, what I decided to do was to cover them with aluminum tape. Now, this stuff is magical. It's really easy to work with. Uh, one thing you have to keep in mind is that you want to make sure you don't lose the end of it. So whenever I tear a piece off, I fold it over. So apparently if you get it cut off at the backing, then it's really hard to, to, to get a hold of the stuff to pull it loose. So that's how I work with it. But it's pretty much like aluminum foil with adhesive on it. So if you've ever worked with like shielding tape in a guitar cavity, it's just like that, but easier. So you can pretty much tear it off and mold it however you want. So I'm probably going to end up using a lot more than I originally anticipated just because it's so easy to work with. So any place there's not a window, I might have a piece of that, especially under the bulbs when I put the LEDs in. Oh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that I rigged up a little rig to test LEDs with using that old nacelle that I busted loose and opened up. So I drilled a hole in here in the middle and then just kind of ran a bulb up in there just so I could see what it looked like. And as you can see, you can see it on camera with a light on it, with a bunch of lights on it. So, and that is one five millimeter uh, 12 volt LED running on a 9 volt battery. It's a, a red one if I didn't say so. So, uh, here are actually, oh, that's something I was doing with the deflector. But here are some of my LEDs. So I got 10 millimeters to put in basically for the white, for the, for the windows, so all the window lighting, anywhere I can fit them. And then I have a bunch of different colors of these, but I'm really only going to be using the uh, blue and the red for the nacelles and the impulse engines, obviously. So, but they're pretty good bulbs. As you can see, even without 12 volts, it's pretty nice and bright, <laughs> nice and red. I don't know if you can tell how, how nicely it's showing up red, but yeah, it's a red bulb, so it's uh, pretty good there. So... So along with covering up the vents here, um, I put it over the buttonholes here, as you can see. And my plan is to fill the buttonholes with Tamiya modeling putty. But I've never used it before, and from what I've seen in YouTube videos, it looks like it's pretty runny. So I was afraid that if I tried to fill a bottomless hole, I would just be packing more of it in there and making a mess. So my thought was to go ahead and cover it up from the inside with tape. So, got a little bit more reflectiness in there, and it's something for the putty to catch on to when I uh, go to fill those holes. So hopefully I won't, won't need very much, it'll be nice and clean. Okay, so um, drilling windows is underway. I'll need a little bit of cleanup, but it's definitely off to a good start. And that was done with the uh, drilling the three holes and wiggling it around method and then squaring it off with the uh, pin vise file for the windows. Obviously they're not done yet, but it's working. Um, it's not taking a really long time, so that is definitely off to a good start. And the other thing, I used the uh, model putty to fill the holes, obviously not perfectly, it's going to probably take another layer, but um, I think it expands or contracts as it dries, so I guess we'll see, but obviously sand that line off there, and then uh, give them another coat, and that should take care of the button situation. And really that's pretty much it at this point, just going to um, work on more sections, work my way around, and then um, I'm saving the uh, fancy windows until I have a little bit more experience, but it, it'll all get done eventually, and um, tomorrow I'll probably start marking off windows to drill for the, for the uh, top part of the saucer. So, anyway, 
Um, it's going pretty good, and um, thanks for watching.